a combination of a lot of things. Uh, number one, um, I was graduating that year. So technically I could leave and stop studying. I didn't have to study anymore. I'd be done. Another one would have, was that I wanted to play the point guard position. And because I knew that, you know, in the PBA, it would be a big advantage to be a bigger guard at that position. But I knew I wouldn't be able to play it in Ateneo because, you know, you guys had, you had Matt and uh, I think at the time you had Tyler, mm -hmm. you had Tyler, you had uh, Jolo, you had all, yeah. these, all these smaller guards that yeah. would take that position because they, you know, you wouldn't slide them to the two. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I felt like um, I needed to bet on myself in a sense that, you know, I would have to carve my own way um, to get into the pros. Because, you know, as you know, I did not um, play my last year. Yeah. yeah. Barely. So, yeah. you know, for me to up my draft stock, for me to have a chance to actually make it in the PBA and at least, you know, be picked in the first or second round, I had to, you know, make my own way. And I felt like if I had stayed, it might not have not been the same. Um, I definitely missed Ateneo because, you know, I've been at Ateneo all my life and it was one of the hardest decisions I've ever made. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm thankful it was able to serve me, um, you know, in the process. You know, later on, it was able to serve me well. Yeah. So with a side topic only, since you said you graduated already in that year, I'm really curious since I'm from La Salle, but people say, of course, I applied for Ateneo, so I took the asset. But what separates an Atenean education? Like some people, because they're ready going to the pros or they have a huge opportunity abroad or in another venture somewhere. They decide not to finish their studies anymore, even if there's just a few units. So for you, I think your communications major. Yeah. What do you think? What What's the most important part that the Atenean education can give to you for your future? I think it's just you know when you have Atenean education, you're just like if you come from La Salle, you come from UP, the big three basically, or UST. Um, you know, you're looked at differently in the workplace, right? If you come in with a with that type of education. So yeah. that's number one. I think for me, that Atene education teaches you a lot of things, especially as a student athlete, because they don't prioritize anyone. As you can see, you know, CJ Perez and them, yeah. they didn't try to save him. They didn't try yeah. to help him out or nothing like that. Once you yeah. fail, you're gone. Mm -hmm. uh, you go on a, uh, I think 31 year did probation in that yeah, career. Yeah, second year, yeah. Yeah, if you don't want to yeah. do probation, then you can't, then you can't play basically, yeah. or you can't be at the school. So it teaches you that you have to value being a student first, which is true. Because as you get older, and as you go past 35, 38, 40 years old, there's no more basketball. So yeah. you really only have your education to fall back on. Um, and that's that's a big thing for me. I think uh, now I'm, I'm contemplating going back to school for master's at the same time as playing basketball. Because, you know, it will really be beneficial as we go, as I go forward um, after my career is over in basketball. Do you plan to study again in Ateneo for master's communication? Yeah, that, that, that's uh, I'm I'm thinking about it if when I'm gonna do it, but I'm definitely going to do it. Oh, Ateneo, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. I really I really want to also take master's eventually because it gives you an edge, I think, an advantage exactly. yeah. among yeah. others. Yeah, when they start working, yeah. like even just with the pay, right? If you have a master's degree, <laughs> yeah, it's higher. Yeah. Uh, your position at least yeah. is higher right away. So yeah, yeah. Do you plan to be like a commentator or, or or something when you retire? Like your dad's a really good commentator when he's yeah. not coaching. So. Uh, well, I did take calm. So, you know, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd be open to doing that. I, I also want to go into advertising and journalism and things like that. I may want to write someday. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things. I, I don't really know at this point, but I do have a lot of things in mind that I want to do in the future. Yeah. So going back to your basketball career, I already touched on it a bit that you you joined Maharlika, you joined uh, Mighty Sports, and you joined PBA D League, which is for me the best with how you were getting triple doubles with your best triple double against I don't know when you Hajem when you scored 20, 45 points, 12 rebounds, and 18 assists. So to summarize the three, so it's just quick. How can how did those three stint? help your draft stock or like your ability to show a different side of you that you weren't able to show in Ateneo because here you had immense opportunity to really showcase your talent well in both leagues it it gave me the opportunity to play the point guard position which I really wanted to play uh you know I I believed I, I was more effective with the ball in my hands and you know both my coaches in both leagues coach Viss and coach Mark they gave me that opportunity um even when I went to Zamboanga uh, at the end of my MPBL uh, stint, they were able to do the same for me. So really, um, 
just that tr- playing the point guard position, understanding, you know, where I can put my teammates, getting my teammates involved, as well as, you know, in, in the MPBL, the physicality was crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. It was just yeah. every game, somebody would be in your face, somebody would be yeah. going at you. So that helped me for the PBA because the PBA is also very physical. Um, yeah. That helped a lot. Uh, aside from that, you know, the D-League helped me showcase that I could do more than one thing. And I feel like a lot of coaches look at that. A lot of PBA coaches look at that for, for guys who are coming into the draft because you just don't want somebody who can just score or somebody who yeah. can only defend. You want to have like somebody who can do all of that. So thankfully, I was able to show that in the D-League. Um, and I think that's uh, one of the reasons why my or what my dad stated, the reason why he drafted me.